are back at the Forum Lab in Portland where it's all about taking the movements that we learn here and incorporating them into our daily lives and our workout routines. Andrew Blaze is the co-founder and the man behind the moves. Thanks so much for You're having welcome. us back in here. Thanks for coming back. Of course. <laughs> all right, so today we're focusing on our shoulder muscles, but not so much the front muscles. It's more about the back muscles today. Yes, we're gonna be focusing on the side that no one tends to use in their mm -hmm. daily life. So we're gonna be focusing more so on the rear delts and your lateral heads. Um, the front delts tend to get a lot of use in just our daily movement. Yeah. Um, picking up children, kind of doing things out in front of us at our desk. We're, we're constantly putting tension into the front of the delts and we're forgetting about the backside. The backside's very underutilized. Mm. So I'm gonna show you a quick uh, warm up that I like to do to kind of yeah. get the rotator cuff going. Your infra and supraspinatus are the, the rear parts of your rotator cuff and that's where most common shoulder injuries occur. Okay. So a big one to kind of fire those rotator muscles is called an external rotation. So these are warm ups for people. Yeah, Perfect. so this is what you wanna do before you're gonna be doing any like actual muscular work, okay. okay? So when I'm warming up my rotator cuff with an external rotation, a couple things I'm gonna focus on. One, you want the resistance pulling away from the body. So when I get set up, I'm gonna retract my shoulders. Retraction is a big part of setting yourself up for success during your exercise. Mm. So I'm gonna stand tall, pull those shoulders back. The big thing I'm gonna focus on with this and for viewers at home is keeping that elbow pinched straight up against the ribs. If I go through this movement and the elbow comes off, I'm gonna lose the focus of the movement. So okay. I'm not actually into those rotator cuff uh, muscles, I'm actually into my rear delt here. So I'm gonna keep that elbow tight to the torso, right up against the ribs, and then I'm gonna pull that hand as far laterally as I can without letting the elbow leave. I'm gonna feel an internal muscle that's firing right here. So internal inside the shoulder here, you're gonna feel that pinch out back and then we're just rotating back forward. You can add more tension as you progress in this mm. or grab a heavier band as you progress, but it's super important to just make sure that the elbow stays tight, we're pulling the hand out laterally, we're feeling the engagement in the shoulder socket so we can protect and warm up those shoulders before we even get started on our movements. So. If we're at home doing this, we're all warmed mm -hmm. up. What are some exercises then that we can do? Um, there's a couple good ones. So for the rear delts, I like to, I tend to go into like band pull aparts. If you have a band at home, you can pull it apart this way, okay. engaging the muscles out back. Another one I like to do is just making sure that with, when you're trying to activate the rear delt, there's a lot of other things that could be activated back there. So it's important to really isolate. When you're isolating, keeping your, your similar bend in your elbow throughout the movement as you're pulling resistance towards the posterior side of your body, feeling engagement in the back of the shoulder and then coming back across, making sure that we're keeping the torso nice and still and the engagement is happening just through that rear delt. That's a good one to do. Obviously, you're gonna hit both sides when right. you do those. Another good one, if you have access to weights. So I have a couple dumbbells here. Another good one is something called a rear fly. And if I'm setting up for a rear fly, I'm gonna go into a hinge. So I'm hinging, pushing the hips straight back, letting that chest fall forward, keeping that slight little bend in my elbows. I'm using the back of the shoulders to pull those dumbbells up to about body height and then nice and controlled, I'm feeling the muscle work on the way down as well. So I'm not pulling back and just dropping out of it. I'm controlling the weights back, I'm controlling the weights forward. That's a really good one that's gonna warm up the back of the shoulders. There's also a couple other things you can do. Um, the lateral head of your shoulder is important to be hitting too. So things like lateral raises are really good for you. Okay. And a lateral raise, you see people doing them in the gym wrong quite often and they're really just kind of flinging the weight up, leading with their hand, leading with the dumbbell, thinking about getting the dumbbell up. Ultimately, that's not getting that isolation in the lateral head of your shoulder. So when you're doing something like a lateral raise, I tell people to really tend on leading with your elbow. So if you can lead with your elbow, your elbow towards the ceiling, that's gonna do that direct tie-in right up to the lateral head of your shoulder. You're gonna feel the work being done on the outside and that's really gonna fire up that muscle and it's gonna take away that pressure from the front delt. As soon as that hand goes up higher than the elbow, we're gonna feel tension here. Okay. And a lot of people have shoulder issues and when they're doing things like overhead pressing, it's bringing them a lot of pain. Yeah. It's in important. In the shoulders. Yeah, right in the joint itself. So it's important when you're doing something like an overhead press to not have the hand cranked out to the side, that elbow way out at 90 degrees. You wanna drop that elbow into wherever's natural. So if you were to raise your arm, 
you see how I come in at about that 45 degree? That's the same way that the elbow should be going up and down in your press. Yes, okay. you can lock out at the top. It's okay to be stacked at the top, but on the way down, we're bringing that elbow naturally in line so it's not forcing that shoulder into any weird position. Okay. So that's a really important tip for viewers at home. When you're doing shoulder pressing, starting with those elbows slightly out in front, pressing to the top all the way through, and then coming back with that elbow slightly in front of the torso. All right, so if you're at home working on your <laughs> arms and shoulders, remember these tips, but yes. we will have them, of course, for you on our 207 section of our website and our app. Thanks again so much you're welcome. for doing this with us. Stay with us. 207 is back after this.